Hello there, my name is Ismail. So 2021 is here and uh, unfortunately for us in my country, they have banned any fireworks show because of obvious reasons. It would lead to people crowding or gathering around and uh, because of COVID, uh, they don't want that to happen. But uh, that didn't stop me from shooting my own fireworks inside Blender very safely and uh, doing all the social distancing uh, that is required inside my house and uh, so this is what I'm going to show you how to do as well in case you're having the same issues. Yeah, so let's dive in in Blender and uh, just show you how to set up uh, the project files. You can start by adding an icosphere, just going to scale it down a bit and then add a plane. This is going to be the particles uh, that are emitted so I'm just going to go to edit mode. You don't want uh, the particle object to have a lot of uh, polygons uh, because it's not necessary and it will just slow down your computer so all we want is a, a sprite uh, like this just a simple triangle is enough uh, so i'm just going to go, go to edit mode and uh, reduce that into a, 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 a three-sided polygon then you can go to your particle settings and uh, add a new particle setting if we play back i'm just going to reduce uh, the timeline to something like a uh, hundred so that i can see what's going on and uh, then you can select your emitter scroll down into render change this to objects and then select your uh, plane as the object now we can scale this up just a bit so that uh, we have a size a good size uh, for our particles now we can also go to the world setting and change uh, the background to black and so that we don't see anything but uh, the particles i also don't want to see the mesh emitter here so i'll just go to the object properties and then under instancing you can change it you can turn off the object and render so that we don't see the emitter just see the instances of particles now i also don't like the orientation of these particles how these are generated uh, we can go back to the particle settings and under rotation turn on rotation uh, so that they have a nice orientation uh, to that uh, the gravity is a lot uh, that's why they're just falling down quickly so we can scroll down to the to the field weight and uh, reduce that to something reasonable so that we get uh, that kind of push outside now all the particles are being emitted using the normal direction of the faces uh, that they are emitted from so we can also go to the velocity and increase that uh, so that we give them a bigger push uh, maybe something like a, a two we want the fireworks to start at uh, frame 10 and end at around frame uh, 60. so if we play back we get something like that we can give this an emissive material so i'm just going to do that just select this change this shader to emission uh, bring this to give this a value of 10 and turn on bloom then you can play around with the color just a bit and see what we get if you look at images of fireworks you see that uh, the trails if you look at reference images of fireworks you see that uh, these trails are not always a single color it's kind of like a gradient from a brighter to a much darker color now to create that in blender uh, all you have to do let's say first playback you see ours is a single color each trail is a single color and if you want a thicker trail you just have to increase the particles the particle count let's uh, double this oh, let's just increase this by 50. our trails are a bit thick uh, but uh, if you want to have thinner trails like you see in the reference images here uh, you might need smaller particles and also more particles and uh, another trick you can do is uh, uh let me first go to edit mode as uh, you see that uh, every all the particles are being emitted let me first make sure that this is back on all the particles are being emitted are from these faces so what you can do is uh let me first just delete this just to show what is going on if you have a single face like this the thickness of the trail is going to be the width of the faces so if i reduce this that's how thick each trail is going to be so if i want my trails to be a bit thin then you want the faces to also be uh, very very thin so so the easiest way would be is uh, to add a plane like this and uh, that means we'll have a single trail ejecting like that and now if you want more than one then we can duplicate this make it face a different angle now we have two like that then we can duplicate them rotate them 
and uh, we can even reduce their size by changing the by scaling the faces down the individual faces down let's see we have thinner trails now but uh, we can duplicate them them again further rotate them to different direction make sure we have a pivot point set to the center set to 3d cursor and see the smaller the faces are the better are the smaller the thickness of the, the trails you're creating so we can duplicate this even further rotate this uh, until we get a lot of faces to give us uh, now you can see and you can see this makes better trail and the great thing about this is that you also get this random thickness of the different trails you have you can see we have this one that is smaller than this so we have a lot of randomization and if you want you can also duplicate this even further give it a random rotation and you can see that is amazing uh, so what we want is uh, our trails to have a different color along uh, the path you can see this is brighter than the back side here uh, this, uh, you can see you also get some random colors uh, there so now what we can do to achieve that uh, we can set up a gradient let me first and the best way to set this up is uh, by adding a, a plane like this this is just going to help us visualize uh, how the gradient is, go is going to look we can also give it the same material as the emissive material like that and then now we can add a texture gradient uh, gradient texture if you look at the fact uh, the color value of this i see that uh, we have a gradient going from left to right what we want is to have a gradient uh, growing from the center outwards other uh, and that will give us all the colors we want to use turn on uh, the texture coordinate mapping and change this to object select the emitter as the object and i know the icosphere is the emitter so i'm just going to select that and that will be used as the center position of the gradient and now i just have to change uh, the gradient position to spherical and you can see i will have a gradient that comes out from the center to outside, outwards now if i scale this up you can see we're also getting uh, if i just delete or hide this you see how we're getting a gradient uh, for the particles as well like so now, then all we have to do is colorize this into whatever we want. So I can use a color ramp. Uh, give this an orange color like that. And uh, this a brighter orange color. You can even just give this a much a higher value, like five. And uh, make it brighter and now we can add a math node around here with the operation of uh, power so we have something like that now we can also scale this up just a bit just so we have something like that and you can see uh, the kind of effect we are getting which is i think uh, quite nice and now we can fit this into our color now we have our fire wax think uh, that looks amazing now all we have to do is uh, duplicate this just select the entire package shift d duplicate that somewhere else now this is a uh, blowing up at the same time or at the same so what we can offset uh, this other explosion uh, to another to, to say something like uh, after this explodes this could explode at around 20 frames so to do that you need to make sure that uh, this is a different is using a different uh, particle settings so i'm just going to add new 
and that should give us the same settings but uh, now this is separate from this so we can just offset our start frame to something like 20 and now this blows up and then the other one blows up now we can increase uh, the lifetime to about 80 maybe 100 and uh, create a random value as well this can also be a hundred uh, but uh, with some randomness if you play back we get i think that looks quite amazing and uh, remember you can turn off these you don't have to render uh, instances so you can turn them off and now we get perfect we need this to have a different color actually i like the color of this so i'm just going to duplicate this so that we have a third explosion at around here so let's also duplicate and uh, we know we wanted to use a different material so i'm just going to grab this duplicate this and uh, set up a different material here we're going to change the colors a bit so let's use a bluish color Next in with an let's do a few things here something like that and that is going to be uh, the second explosion at uh, this explosion so we need this to use uh, that material and that material is set to plane 001 so I'm just going to select that and go to the particle settings and make sure that it's using uh, the new the new plane with a different material so I'm just going to select plane zero two and you can see now we have a new explosion okay so these need to have i want this to be offset as well so this can be can start at around 30 and at around 60. let's see double uh, the particle count uh, again if you want the project files uh, you can find them on my patreon page and let's bake all dynamics and see how I think this looks amazing I just admit a camera into this and see how things go